everyone, and welcome to Community Connections. I'm Marnie Yule, your host, and it is almost Thanksgiving, so a lot of wonderful things are going on. We start our holiday activities and events, and one of my very favorite started 18 years ago, but I've been doing now, this is my 15th year, is the Flying High Turkey Drive. And yes, we do fly high for turkeys. And joining me is Rick Chase, Fire Marshal with Central Arizona Fire and Medical Authority, uh, with whom we could not even have this vent without. Oh, come on. You can do it without me. You just need that big truck there that takes you up in the air, right? I know. Engine 50, right? It is, is that what's truck called? 50. Truck yes. 50. Yep. That's, that's yep. I, I remember when uh, you got a new one, yep. brought it into service, and Chief Freitag invited me up there to actually test ride in it to make it sure it was all up to snuff for our annual turkey drive. That's but right. Let's talk about the turkey drive. What do we do it for? So we are doing this to collect turkeys and other Thanksgiving items for the Yavapai County Food Bank to help out families in need. So it's a very important um, event that takes place every year, mm -hmm. and it's great to see the final outcome. Typically we get, I don't know, Marnie, you probably know the numbers of, of turkeys that are donated along with other um, cash items as well as food supplies. But again, it's just a fantastic event. Yes. Um, community comes together, and I know we're in interesting times now, which we'll probably talk about with the turkey drive. But mm -hmm, mm -hmm. yeah, it's just a great community event. Well, and as everybody knows, this has been a year like no other, and a lot of people have not been able to work or have been out of work or have been furloughed and have just gone back to work. I mean, any number of, of things that have been going on. And so therefore, maybe things are a little tighter this year. And that's where we come in. We come in with our event for people to donate turkeys and all the fixins, as we call them. Yep. And they're provided throughout the community for those in need. And maybe you didn't need it last year, and maybe you need it this year. Or maybe you didn't need it, and it's just everybody is different. So we're there for you. Prescott Valley has shown to be tremendously giving. We yeah. traditionally 1,500, 1,800 turkeys just in our Fry's store alone. And we yeah. partner with Fry's and Pepsi and a lot of our other partners. We'll mention those in a few minutes. Yeah. Just in our store alone. But this is actually a Northern Arizona event sponsored with Yavapai Broadcasting. So it is in Prescott Valley, Prescott Fry's on Willow Creek and Ferris Street. Also in Cottonwood, that goes to the old Mission Food Bank. And then also in Flagstaff at their Fry's and they raise, uh, get the turkeys for their particular food bank. So this is a, is a big effort all the way around, but here in Prescott Valley, we've kind of taken ownership of it and, and pri made it a priority that we want to rise and, and bring the best, that's and right. we do. Yeah, it's been pretty competitive, and I think that's what helps make this fun is to see who, who is going to gather the most items or the most turkeys. Mm -hmm. and, and again, that just brings a little bit of a fun aspect to this thing. The spirit uh, of camaraderie and yeah, giving. Absolutely. Well, and also because, um, you know, we've been involved with it, and obviously our firefighters have been out there, and I go up in, in Truck 50 um, to 100. How hard does it go? It goes 104 feet. 104 feet. We go up one foot for every five turkeys donated, and I yep. say halfway through the event, where I'm already up at the top. Believe it or not, that's a very interesting view from 104 feet over, over fries <laughs> in looking right. at Prescott Valley. Over the 15 years, I've watched so many things be built. Oh, you yeah. know, that wasn't there <laughs> two years ago, and, and it's wonderful to see our community grow, but also the generosity of the community coming together. Yeah. Prescott Valley Police Department has joined us. I mean, they'll be bringing some of their vehicles out, but they're out there with us all day long. We're excited to have them. Yep. Our friends from the National Wild Turkey Federation, the Yavapai Yelters. Yep. <laughs> you know, right. I always do that, but it's like they have a gobbler. Yeah. Uh, Pepsi, Yavapai um, Broadcasting. Again, we're we're... It's, it's just a community event. Yes. And we have so much fun. Yep. It's always always a good time. So, so when is it? Now that everybody's like thinking I can buy that turkey and I'm going to bring it over and donate it. Yes. It is Monday, November 23rd. Right. And I believe it goes from 12 to 5. It's 12 to 6. Okay. Yeah. We're usually wrapping up the, the live remote goes from 1 to 5. Yep. And then we're wrapping up with the last turkeys being donated up until 6 o'clock. And, yeah. and by that time, I'm usually coming down about 5 o'clock because depending on the weather, it's <laughs> been beautiful. Yep. It's been windy and cold, but guarantee every time that sun goes down, that chill, yep. is, chill is there and I'm ready to come down and, and actually visit with everybody and thank them for being so generous yeah. with this. This year, a little bit different. For us, we thank you again for letting us come in because that's been one of the concerns is health and safety guidelines. Mm -hmm. So all of our volunteers, and it'll be fun 
to see them, but they'll all be wearing masks. So just to let you know that when you come in contact with our volunteers, they'll be wearing masks and gloves. They will take the turkeys out from you. You don't have to come in contact. If you have it in a basket, just bring it out to them yep. or to the firefighters because a lot of people bring them out to us at the truck. Yep. And then we'll take it from there. We load them up on the, on the trucks that go back to the food bank to keep them for distribution in the next couple of days. Right now, if you're watching this, you can make a donation to the food bank early on. If you're at Fry's or you purchase a turkey anywhere, you can take it to the food bank located on Long Mesa and say this is for the Flying High Turkey Drive and it counts towards those numbers. Yeah. So you can do it ahead of time because I know a lot of people are taking advantage of sales yep. and shopping opportunities before you know before Monday. Yeah. So you can still make those donations or I always say just drop it off at the chamber and we'll take it from you yeah. and we'll make sure that it gets over to the food bank. So additional ways to make it easier. Right. You don't have to want to shop, you can also Give us money. That's right. And what do we do with the money, Rick? It all goes to the food bank to purchase more turkeys and more items. And I've seen people come out and they'll hand us turkeys, they'll hand us a box of stuffing. And we've had folks hand us change that they've had. So it's just every uh, bit counts. So it's great to you see You remember that. that family that we have, and I remember them back for several years now. They show up with like 10 carts full yeah. of turkeys and stuffing and sugar and flowers and just all kinds of food items no don't want us to know who they are don't want any photos they just bring the carts out and it's it's like for the first you know 20 minutes they're bringing carts out they don't want any thanks we give them a whole lot of love mm -hmm. but that's what they do every year yeah. is give and there's so many people like that that we're just amazed and and you know we're all like half the time in tears that people are so generous to help us make sure that everyone in our community has the traditional Thanksgiving dinner. So, Absolutely. And we have so much fun. It's always a blast. That's why we want you to come out and have a good time with us. This <laughs> is kicking off the, you know, obviously Thanksgiving and holiday season. Yeah. And it is our one of our warm, fuzzy events, I call it. Yep. And all we want you to do is come out and help us support the community. Yep. No, nothing else. And if you want to give a gift card or money. $20 will almost pretty much close to, depending on the size of the turkey, feed a family of four, the complete Thanksgiving dinner. Yep, that's great. You do it. What do you have? What's your favorite Thanksgiving fixing side? That's Stuffing. my question today. Stuffing's my favorite. Stuffing. Okay. A little savory stuffing or sometimes on the sweet side? Yep. <laughs> Any it. Do you put gravy on it? Um, I do if it's there, if it's available. Yes. Yeah. Do you know that if it's called stuffing if you stuff it in the turkey and it's called dressing if you only have it in the side in a casserole? See, we learn something new every day, right? Well, I see Marissa over there. She's nodding, so she knows that. <laughs> I didn't know that. To me, I grew up with stuffing is stuffing. That's right. So again, the Flying High Turkey Drive coming up on Monday, November 23rd, yep. 12 to 6 at your local fry stores. But come out and see us in Prescott Valley. Rick Chase Fire Marshal, we'll be out there. Absolutely. Gobble, gobble. Yep, we're going to be out there with a lot of the firefighters, our local Thank you. Citizens. We got to go now. We'll take a yep. short break. We'll be right back. Okay. <laughs> what do you think you're doing, Kevin? I uh, was just going to drive home. Uh, 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 there are several warning signs present that you shouldn't be driving. Like hearing voices? Like your text to emoji ratio? Oh man, the selfies. <laughs> selfies nailed it. We all have warning signs that let us know that we're probably not okay to drive. Mine is pretending to be your subconscious. Craig, come on man, let's put a ride home. Here's something we bet you didn't know. Nearly half of all cancers can be prevented. That's right, half, nearly 50%, mostly by making small everyday changes in your diet and controlling your weight, walking more, eating less, and eating foods that help you and your family to seriously reduce the risk of cancer. And of course, by not smoking. Visit the Cancer Prevention Together We Can website and get a free 30-day planner filled with tips, recipes, stats, and more about protecting your family. Go to prevent50.org. It takes less than one minute to find out if you may have prediabetes, and you can do it here. So what are you waiting for? Just go to the site. And welcome back to Community Connections. Continuing with our holiday events and activities is one of my favorites. They're all my favorites, can you tell? The Holiday Festival of Lights, Parades, Civic Center Lighting, the Christmas 
Create a Tree display. Joining me is Marissa Gillardoni. Yes. With our community services, Parks and Recreation part, and she's this is her event working with us on a new piece of it. So first of all, the holiday festival of lights parades when Prescott Valley kicks off the Christmas and holiday season with our musical entertainment, the lighting of the Civic Center, and our nightlight parade. But new this year is an event that you've added to it after the parade yeah. called Santa's North Pole Village. North Pole Village. Why don't you tell us about so that one? So we invite families to come to the library. Um, we're going to take you up our magical Christmas elevator to the Crystal Room, and then you'll get to take a walk through um, the Gumdrop Forest, get a peek into the Gingerbread Workshop, and then end with a trip to Santa's house where you can peek in. I think he might be checking his naughty or nice list. And then we'll take a family photo on the way out. Okay, so what we want to do is, is, is due to health and safety guidelines and everything we've been talking about, and you're probably sick of hearing about, but it is what it is, is that this year you won't be able to sit on Santa's lap. So I would say if you can't, start writing your letters to Santa. Make sure that somehow you're communicating with Santa we if you're not able to. We will have Santa's mailbox, so you can nice. drop off letters if people want to bring their wish list, tell Santa what they've been up to. We'll be happy to collect those and get them to the North Pole. Um, but yeah, unfortunately, we won't be able to sit on Santa's lap this year, but you can send the message through a letter. Right, and you can wave to Santa, and I'm sure Definitely. be able to see him. So this is new. It follows immediately follows the parade about 6.30. Correct. And then it's open, and it's free? It's free, yeah, absolutely free. It starts... Well, we have to wait till Santa's done with the parade. So right. usually he's done about 6.30, we'll get started, and we'll be there until about 9, till the crowd empties out, so that everyone can get a turn to check out the village. Right. Well, traditionally, um, the library has always been open after the parade for the Created Tree yes. displays that people can go and view. Yes. Now, is that still going on? Absolutely. Um, applications are due the 20th. November 20th um, and we invite people after they check out Santa's Village they have their family photo is the perfect opportunity to walk around the library check out the trees and place your vote also this year they're doing wreaths so there's gonna be wreaths create a wreath and also create a tree so you'll have some options so now are you gonna have separate voting for the best wreath people's choice and then people's choice of the tree correct there will be two different categories and so those do open up the same night December yes. the 4th and there but those are you can view those anytime the libraries open up until the end of the year. Yeah, they'll stay in the library. Um, voting doesn't end until the end of the year. So if you can't make it out to this event, but you still want to come check out the trees, we welcome you to come do that. Take a walk around our library. We have a beautiful library, and the trees look so pretty lit up with all the lights of the Civic Center. I know. It's beautiful. Civic Center. Uh, shout out to Public Works. I saw them out there working when oh I went gosh. over to They've come over to the studio, and they are doing crazy crazy fill in the lights making sure everything's gonna work testing it all out I tell you you can see this place from space yeah. it's absolutely gorgeous and then of course the annual parade you can get the application for the parade at pbchamber.org or call Brady at 772-8857 again that holiday festival of lights parade is just a fun evening we're asking again limiting number of people on your floats please and we've heard that you know they just want to decorate and be a part of things they don't necessarily are going to have large groups of people and again along the parade route you know kind of stay in your family or local groups and and then just kind of space along the parade route. we have plenty of room it goes from the event center, Finley Toyota Center, all the way down Main Street and around Lakeshore and Skoog Boulevard. So plenty of places to park, plenty of places to see the parade and still maintain that distancing that you might want. I want to thank everybody for continuing to support us and allow Parks and Recreation, Community Services and the Chamber to continue this holiday tradition because so many things are in some cases in other areas being canceled and we've had the support to continue but we always want to recognize that we need to remind people that we're still absolutely in we're the pandemic. happy to offer the event we want people to come out we just want to do it safely so right. that we can continue to do things like this and, it, and it's fun so this is friday december 4th Correct. holy smokes it's going by so quickly and it'll be here before you but know right it. now create a tree wreaths and trees and wreaths applications are available they're due friday correct and then also for the Holiday Festival of Lights Parade, you can still get your entry in, and that's into, I think, around December 2nd or 3rd is when we're going to be able to um, have to cut that off. But we just want to make it fun for everybody, and, and it's a great way to celebrate the holidays. And again, the Civic Center, when they light it, 
It's crazy, crazy beautiful. Oh, yeah. Even if you're just going to do a lap around it in your car, check it out. Make sure you check it out because the lights are so pretty. Well, and they were telling me they also light up Lakeshore. Oh, yeah. It, I mean, Lakeshore extends. and then also Lake Valley, mm -hmm. the trees along Lake Valley. That's and true. those guys and gals, they take such pride in what they do to decorate that Civic Center for the holidays. It's just just amazing and we're so appreciative because I drive around there it's like I'm going home Gosford Hill and I said I think I'm just going to cruise around the Civic Center and take a look at things it's so welcoming it makes you want to do just another little lap around to check just, it out oh yeah because yeah. you might see something you didn't see before yeah but again come on out and again there's no charge a little little participation um, admission for the the parade because we do give awards so we, we do have a little registration, but other than that, we just love you to participate. And again, it's another community event that we're continuing with because Prescott Valley is the greatest place to live. <laughs> Wouldn't you say? I would. I would agree with you. And again, Santa's North Pole Village. Yes. Open. Yes. December 4th uh -huh. after the parade, which should be about 630, and we'll be there until about 9. Any refreshments or anything like that going on? Pea Vine will be open in the library. They do hot chocolate as well as coffee and baked goods, so that will be available. Um, not sure yet what the Valley of Light... Oh, my gosh, sorry. Not sure yet what the <laughs> Festival of Lights is going to have to offer. Um, I know there's typically some concessions. They're usually hot, hot chocolate, but again, keep an eye out. Watch not only Community Services Facebook, but our Facebook because we're still working on the program. A lot of schools when we normally have the youth choirs right. aren't participating, so we'll be mixing it up a little bit, perhaps starting a little bit later. But still a great evening. Come on out. So this is Friday, December the 4th. Yes. Marissa, thank you for joining thank us. Thank you for having me. Thank you all. Short break. We'll be right back with more on Community Connections. brings us together and adds flavor to life. That's why it's important to wash hands, surfaces, and fresh produce. Keep raw meat, poultry, and seafood separate from ready-to-eat foods like fruits and vegetables. And cook to proper temperatures using a food thermometer. Enjoy! And refrigerate leftovers within two hours. For more tips on safely preparing foods, visit homefoodsafety.org. And welcome back to Community Connections. Did I not say this is a jam-packed show and we are coming into the holiday season, which is jam-packed. And joining me now is Lexi Niekamp, owner of Lessons by Lexi Dance Studio, with a traditional, with a new spin on Ed, Christmas holiday offering. And welcome, Lexi. Thank you for having me. Thank I wanted to so tell much. you, Lexi is also our Miss Yavapai County that that's an organization that feeds into the Miss America program, and so we'll be, um, she'll be competing for Miss Arizona come next <laughs> next year, but yeah. it'll yeah. happen soon enough. But right now, owner Lexi Lessons by Lexi Dance Studio, great place um, for even kids of all ages, including people like me. So welcome. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks for having me. Yeah. So this year we are putting on the Nutcracker Snow Globe Experience. Um, growing up, I went to the Nutcracker a lot and always the saw Nutcracker. the stage performance in California and I just was in love with it. And I said, someday when I own a dance studio, we are going to do the Nutcracker and this year has been quite the spin on everything. So 
we actually have our dancers in a snow globe look experience where they're going to be inside dancing and you are walking outdoors so that we can keep everyone safe. <laughs> You know, it's, that's the way things we're doing things, plan B, new way, yeah. but it's kind of being creative and fun. How is this going to work? Let's talk, well, tell us where the dance studio is located. So it's located at 3250 Gateway Boulevard, so it is at the mall, um, and it's suite 106 across from Go Bananas. Okay, so obviously storefront, mm -hmm. you have a lot of uh, window space. Yes, exactly. So we have, we are surrounded by windows. The mm -hmm. entire dance studio is surrounded by windows, so it's really awesome. Um, and that's pretty much how I got the idea is uh, to have all the dancers inside and there's a scene set up in a set number of windows and you're going to walk through with a storyteller and they tell the story along the way and then mm. the dancers kind of portray the story for you. So is it just one like pass through then? Yeah, so you it's start... one whole path around the side okay. of the building. Okay, okay. Yeah. I'm familiar with the studio, yeah. <laughs> but you know, I haven't walked the whole outside. Yeah. So this is a really a great idea. Again, to one thing, as you well know, as a dancer yourself and a performer, she's an actress also, and yeah. has been in a gazillion shows. I've watched her grow up, mm -hmm. but you love to perform. Yes. In any way, shape, or form. Yes. And this is being able to continue a tradition yeah. in a whole new way. Exactly. Giving yeah. them the opportunity to perform, and then giving us the public an opportunity to continue with the holiday traditions that we we love yeah. and one of mine is always seeing always seeing live live show musical 100%. concert theater or dance programs yeah yeah because my social impact as Miss Yavapai County is arts in action so it's keeping the arts alive just everywhere um, and in any aspect of your life so we are also taking donations of art supplies to donate to schools too um, as well it is five dollars per person mm -hmm. um, and children six and under are free and then there will be hot chocolate for sale too and cookies do you need to go online and register or do you just show no, up and you will and show do it? up yeah. oh, okay. no, so it's just first come first serve uh-huh yeah but it kind of, the line kind of moves right mm -hmm. yes exactly so groups of five or more Mm -hmm. um, probably up to 10 are going to go through the story. So the story just keeps repeating. So we do have two Claras, two okay. Claras moms, because there's a little Clara who falls asleep and there's a little Clara who wakes up, but they have to be in separate windows. Mm -hmm. So we don't have time to reset that fast. So we are just strictly keep going the entire wow. night. So it's going to be really cool because it's just going to be a constant like carousel process. So it's really cool. So they do their scene and then they reset do the scene again, reset, do the scene again, reset for the next group. How'd you think of that? It just came to me. <laughs> I mean, that is those, just so creative. We've just been trying to find things to keep these kids sane during this time. Mm -hmm. um, and I think it's, it's a fundraiser for our elite teams. So, cause this year, as you know, competitions have been quite interesting. So mm -hmm. when they go to compete, it's just gonna be strictly our studio walks in they do their dance and then they leave. There's no audience or anything, and so that's really hard. So I wanted to make sure that this year they at least are starting off the year with an audience. Oh, it's wonderful, and it's yeah. a brilliant idea. Absolutely brilliant. When are the dates? November 27th um, from 5 to 7 p.m., and then November 29th from 2 to 4 p.m., so it's a Friday and a Sunday. And then that next Friday and Sunday, December 4th from 5 to 7 p.m., and December 6th from 2 to 4 p.m. So multiple opportunities to see it and enjoy it. I say bring the bring the whole family. Yeah, for sure. And yeah. again, you know, you might have kids. Uh, maybe they're interested in dance or the arts. And, and what's the youngest student you have? Right now, our youngest is about seven months old. Yeah. And since I already gave up that I dance over there, um, I won't <laughs> ask what the oldest is. <laughs> Stop. <laughs> Do you have a website where people can get more yes. information? Yes, lessonsbylexi.com. Lessonsbylexi.com. And again, art supplies, bring the art yeah. supplies so to. So you can just bring an art supply to donate. Um, and we will be donating all of those to local schools um, and also just families who need it right now who are still in quarantine. Right. And then, you know, I know people are busy with the holidays and you've got, you know, your, your show that you're, you know, producing and putting together. But, you know, a lot of us make those New Year's goals and things and the studio is open. You do practice all the safety yeah. and, and health and safety guidelines there. So if somebody's interested, their kids are interested, they can come and talk to you. Yeah, definitely. They can check out our website, lessonsbylexi.com, or they can even email us at lessonsbylexi at gmail. 
And she's a wonderful teacher. She's a wonderful teacher. I'm telling you, she taught me thriller, but it's great. <laughs> I look forward to Nutcracker, Snow Globe Experience. Again, Lessons by Lexi Dance Studio. Brilliant, creative, wonderful idea, Lexi. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you. I'll be there to see you. Awesome. Couple <laughs> things. I know we're just running out. I, I was sitting here thinking, when are we going to do record the next show? Not until December 1st. Well, December 1st is a holiday stroll through Valley of Lights. Again, open from 6 to 9. No vehicles. Strictly walking. It will be open. We're asking family groups to please, you know, kind of stay together. If you're comfortable wearing masks, most of our volunteers and, and staff people will be wearing masks to make it, you know, more comfortable. Again, it's a one-mile walk outdoors through the Valley of Lights. You see it like you've never seen it before. You get those wonderful pictures for the holidays. Maybe it's my, could be next year's Christmas card. So that's starting on December the 1st. Valley of Lights is open Thanksgiving night, so we're excited that this is, I think, the 21st Valley of Lights opening. A lot of new things, a lot of redoing of the displays we've been working on, a lot of LED lighting after 21 years. Some of them are getting a little tired, but it's a reinvestment. And some people ask, what, what is the money that we raise to the donations go back to? And that's what it goes back to, refurbishing the lights, keeping everything fresh and unique adding music when we can. We've got just a, a whole lot of different new things out at Valley of Lights. So come on out. And again, the hours have changed a little bit this year. We found with volunteers and, and traffic control, uh, people don't tend to go out during the week after nine o'clock much. So it is Sunday through Thursday from six to nine. And then Thursday, uh, Friday, Saturday, and holidays, which includes Christmas Eve, we're open from six to 10. So multiple opportunities for you to see Valley of Lights. It does open Thanksgiving night, is open every single night until December 30th, unless we have a huge snowstorm and then makes the road in inaccessible. And that has happened to us on numerous occasions, but it takes that kind of disaster in my, my eyes to uh, close Valley of Lights. So it's a wonderful evening. And uh, we do have uh, volunteers are all filled up. But if you're interested in volunteering, give Gloria your name. You can call her at the chamber, 772-8857, because there's sometimes people cancel. And it's a great opportunity for a family in your youth group or your church group or your organization to come on out and, and do something fun for the evening. You meet people from everywhere. And they're always full of the Christmas and holiday spirit. And it's a wonderful event. So again, the 21st Valley of Lights opens on Thanksgiving night. And then again, goes all the way through December 30th. Check our website for exact information, but keep an eye on it and just have a wonderful, wonderful holiday. So from all of us here at Community Connections, uh, Eddie, Mark, and myself, we wish you a very, very happy Thanksgiving and we'll see you at Valley of Lights.